Mark chapter 14, verse 51, please. Mark chapter 14, and we'll look at verse 51. Uh, this is one of the most questionable texts in your Bible, and it makes you wonder why in the world did the Holy Spirit want the author to insert this part in the text. Always bugged my mind. So we're going to talk about one weird random guy, and uh, trust me, you're going to hit one of these guys one day. If you live in the Bay Area, you're going to bump into one of these guys one day. When you're trying to do something for the Lord in the middle of that, you're going to bump into one of these guys. Mark chapter 14, and we'll read verse 51. And there followed him a certain young man, having a linen cloth cast about his naked body. And the young men laid hold on him, and he left the linen cloth and fled from them naked. Man, can you, man who wants to run the aisle after that? It makes you wonder why in the world would God put these two little verses without much detail between verse 50 and 53. The story is the disciples, they forsook the Lord and they fled from him. Jesus told them and warned them that if you don't commit and the scriptures must be fulfilled, that all of you will be scattered. But the disciples, they weren't committed enough. They verbally said, I'll follow you, but they didn't mean that truly. And they fled and abandoned Jesus Christ. And then in the middle of this story, all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit saw fit to say, by the way, there was a certain young man that was uh, in there too, and then he left his linen cloth and he ran away too. And I'm like, why in the world would the Holy Spirit take particular note of this? Now, I am not God. I cannot claim and tell you I know the reason why he put that text in there. But when I study these verses and then I see similar things on how this match us in how we do not commit ourselves to the Lord and why we are not 100% disciple and follow Jesus Christ, I can see a lot of things in verse 50, 52, that, 51 and 52 that we can learn from. And that much I do know 100%. The Bible says the scriptures were written all these were written aforetime for our learning. So there's that much I can 100% tell you. There are things that you can learn from this text. And I hope that the Holy Spirit will open your eyes and warm your hearts and make you understand something from this text that could probably change your life. And we can learn a lot from the weird naked guy on the street here. So that's the title of my message, The Weird Naked Guy on the Street. Father God, please fill within me the power of your Holy Spirit and the cleansing of your blood. Uh, Gene Kim is all nothing but dirt and flesh, and may you empty all of that, Father. May there be nothing displeasing uh, to you over here, and that it will be emptied out and covered under the blood, and you'll be magnified, uplifted, and glorified, and there will be a good spirit. Thank you so much for the good spirit so far. I pray that you'll maintain it, but also help us to also be on guard and to be wary and to not be ignorant of the devil's devices. I pray that through, the, uh, through this balance that we can maintain something that will glorify you and that you will hit us hard in this preaching and change our lives. Uh, I pray that the people will see that this is not Gene Kim but you. And may they see nothing of flesh but Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, my first point is the alienation of the naked guy. The alienation of the naked guy. If we look at verse 51, it says, and there. Okay. In verse 51, it says, and there. So the, this certain young man who was just naked, just random out of nowhere, he just happened to be inserted and included in this text when he is not a part of the text. The part of the text goes in verse 50, and they all forsook him and fled, and it should jump to verse 53. And they led Jesus away to the high priest, and then verse 54, and Peter followed him afar off. So basically, verse 50, 53, and 54 should be talking about the disciples. The attention should be on the disciples where they fail to follow Jesus Christ. It should be about the disciples. But no, uh, we get some random outsider who's not a part of the disciples inserted in here, and the Holy Spirit saw fit to say, by the way, this weird naked young guy ran away with the disciples too. 
why would the Holy Spirit include that in there? Because the reason why God included it in there is to show you the exclusion of the text. Is to show you the exclusion over here when following the context. Is that deep for you? Let me go a little bit deeper and let me go a little slower. He wants to show you a specific person who's excluded from the disciples. He wants to tell you that there's some guy who is not that important. But he followed along with the disciples in following Jesus. Didn't you know that? I mean, did you read verse 51? Followed, right, him? So this guy was following Jesus. But he is not a part of the disciples. Yet he decided to follow Jesus Christ. And my point is here is that I'm afraid that some of you are here today who don't think that you're a disciple of Jesus Christ. That you don't think that you're a disciple helping out the church. That you're not a disciple that would contribute with your participation. That you're not a disciple where you read your Bible and pray as consistently as you ought where you have not committed yourself to the point, Lord, I am willing to take up my cross and be your disciple. What did Jesus say? If you're going to be my disciple, take up your cross and follow me. And I'm afraid there are people here today who are following Jesus like the disciples, but they're not really a part of us. Does that feel like you today, that you are here in church today, but you don't feel like you're a part of us? Is that you today? Are you that weird naked guy on the street that just comes in out of nowhere, just happens to go along, but your heart and your mind and your soul is not really in it? And that's why you skip some services. That's why you skip some Zoom meetings. That's why you skip some help when the church needs help. And that's why you uh, backslide in your Bible reading and prayer. And that's the reason why that you still struggle with the same sinful problems. You're preaching and that's the reason why you don't come on the altar and get right with God. And that's the reason why that you're not fully one of us. Is this making any sense here? Yeah, you're preaching, bro. Is that basically you're following Jesus, but you didn't come, but you're alienated from us. You're like, you're following Jesus to a certain point, just out of nowhere, but you're not really one of us. You don't get happy like we do about Jesus Christ. Your heart's not into the preaching like we do. Your, uh, your, your activity, your actions, your testimony is not like one of us. You look like an outsider. Now, we welcome outsiders, amen? amen? We welcome outsiders, visitors. We believe in showing them love. We believe in trying to show them the gospel of Jesus Christ and amen. hope that through our testimony ourselves as disciples, we can win some outsider and have them become like one of us. Amen. 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 That's our purpose. But some of you when, you, when you follow Jesus Christ and you follow the disciples over here, it's been a while, and then you think you're a church member, you think you're a Christian, you think, you think you're a, uh, one of us, but deep down inside your heart, you know you're really not. There's something that you alienated yourself from us, and that's why you haven't been to soul winning with us. That's why you haven't been doing one-on-one uh, -on -one with us. That's why you haven't done discipleship onliners with us. And that's the reason why you don't uh, help us out when setting things up or come to our monthly fellowship. There's something in there. There's something in there that makes you alienated from us. And I'm very sad to say that just like that weird naked guy on the streets, you're like that guy. Just abnormal, weird, outside, not really one of us. Do you feel like one of those people today? Are you that person today? I'm afraid that if you go to majority of churches today, isn't it very sad that you get 5,000 people who fill up the pews, who fill up the seats, but it's not 5,000 that are really in those seats. It's not 5,000 that are really in there worshiping Jesus Christ. It's not 5,000 that dedicate themselves and say, my life is yours, Jesus Christ. It's not 5,000 in there. They're like, you're right about right doctrine. I cast off every wrong doctrine. God forbid some of you are here today who know Bible-believing truth that you've heard from this church, 
but you have not adhered. You did not believe in it. Why? Because you failed to study. Because you don't have the courage to at least have the decency to act, come to the pastor and ask me and then I can take time to help you. You just come to church and then you go amen and you pretend you're like one of us, but you don't. And there's some heresy in there that you hold on to. God forbid. I, I hope that's not the case. So far I don't see that. But God forbid that's one of you right now. That some of you have some this wrong doctrine over here and you pretend you're like one of us, but you're not. You're not a 100% disciple of Jesus Christ. God forbid, onliners, you're definitely guilty of that. I know I do not have more than 300,000 subscribers who believe and teach and adhere to the truth of the words of God like we do in this church. Some of you are watching online right now and just uh, unsubscribe just now. Some of you just shut off that, uh, press that end button just now. Is that you? You know why? You're following us, right? Because it's a catchy title or something. There's something about our church that makes you want to follow us but you're not fully committed. You're not 100% like one of us. It doesn't have to be doctrine. It can be your testimony too. There's something about your testimony you don't follow like we do. Your action, your appearance, your conversation. There's something in our work and in our duty where you volunteer and you participate, but you're not 100% like us. You, when you do it, you just write a name on a sheet and then just don't really 100% commit to it. You lack responsibility. Something that pastor asks you to do, but then you overlook the instruction and don't 100% commit as a disciple. You just follow. You don't say, I take this seriously here. Oh, yeah, I'll volunteer and help. No, 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 no. Are you 100%? I'm a disciple. I take this seriously. I'm going to do it right. Amen. My second point is the actions of the naked guy. The actions of the naked guy. Isn't it so amazing what uh, two words, just the first two words on verse 51 and there, can tell so much truth already. Why did God put and there? Because this is not a part of the text here about the disciples here. And God's like, mm, I'll just put that there. This guy also followed along with the disciples. But see, he's not really a part of them. Speaks volumes from the word of God. That second point is the actions of the naked guy. So look, notice the next part of verse 51. And there, so it shows where he was just, uh, his story was just inserted there even though he's odd and he's out of bounds. He's alienated from the disciples. So he's just inserted there. But then notice, followed him, right? So notice that this naked guy, this weirdo, he followed Jesus Christ. So we notice his actions now. There's something, there are things that I can do for Jesus. There's a certain point where I can follow. Why did this weirdo follow? I don't know. It could be that maybe he was mental and then he's, he saw something that got his attention. And like, you know, I'll follow, I'll follow and see what's going on. Or it could be a curious Joe, maybe a curious Joe where he saw something happening. He's like, what's going on here? I want to check the scene. So then he followed Jesus to check the scenery. Or it could be, where the guy, you know, he had no part in it and then he just happened to go with the flow of the people traffic and then later on it turned out to be a bad scene and then he ditched out. I don't know what's going on, but the point is, is that this guy followed and he wouldn't follow if there was something that caught his attention that made him want to follow. The point with this naked guy is that Hey, you know, if these people are going that way, the guy wasn't thinking, no, I don't want to follow that, them. No, he wanted to follow them. He made a decision and a choice. He committed the action, I'm going to follow Jesus up to here. That much we do agree upon from this text. It's not something that came to him where he was like, uh, where he was like thinking, I don't want to follow, but... I have to follow and I'll follow. No, it wasn't like that. It just came to him naturally. You know, I'm just going to find out what's going on or I'm going to follow. I'm afraid that there are some Christians today who are just like this weird naked guy on the streets. When they follow Jesus, 
They follow him not because, hey, I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. Yes, my name is Simon Peter. Yes, my name is John. Yes, my name is James. I'm going to follow Jesus Christ. No, sadly, there aren't people who follow Jesus because of that. They follow Jesus because it just comes to them naturally. Because I, I just happen to do it. It fits my preference somewhere. You know, you come to church because there's that curiosity. What is San Jose Bible Baptist Church like? wonder how it looks like when he draws, when he teaches. See, it's something that, you, that caught your attention like this weird naked guy. It's something that came naturally to you and you're like, it's just natural for me to go. Some people come to church because it's just natural that what? Natural that because my husband or my wife took me to, uh, says, hey, let's go to church. That's why you're in church today. Preach. Some of you kids, you come to church. Why? Parents go to church. That's why I go to church. It. it just comes in what? Natural. Right. Natural. It's just something natural. So that's why I'm going to come to church. And why do you go out street preaching? Visitation. Huh? Do you do it because you're a disciple of Jesus Christ or it just comes in naturally to you? Oh, it's a routine. Just have to wake up one hour early, earlier or like uh, prepare, wash up two hours earlier and then drive and go over there, street preach. Yes, amen, praise the Lord, amen. Uh, brother, yeah, souls get saved. Pick up a sign and street preach. Ah, and you do it all right. But see, the heart's not in there. You, it just comes in naturally. Good preaching. You know, I saw of you volunteer for kitchen, do the Sunday school, or, you know, come on the altar. Natural. If it's a blowout, natural to shout. You've got to shout. It's not a blowout then. <laughs> You've got to come down on the altar when the preacher preaches a sermon. Why? It's, it's appropriate. It respects him. Or, you know, I've got to show that I am convicted from the preach. Something natural. Natural. Not because you're fully committed. Not because your heart is 100%. You know, you're that weird naked guy. You know, I'll just write notes during teaching. You know, say that was a good sermon, Pastor. To smile at a brother and sister in Christ and try to talk to everybody. Why? Natural. Not because this is what I'm supposed to do as a disciple of Jesus. I love my brother and sister. I love my church. I love God's ministry. And I want to please him and put a smile on his face. I'm going to do it. That's right. Amen. You know what's sad is some of you, you know, when you do the one-by-ones, when you come to the Zoom meetings, it's just natural. Or, God forbid, you want it to come natural to you. You know what's sad is that people get right with God and serve God and they get committed after a blowout, after a summer camp. Why? Because it came naturally to them. Why? Because that atmosphere of people getting excited, the atmosphere of people having a love and desire for the Lord or something just naturally came to you and then you just go with the flow with them and then you serve God. But then if God took away the shout, God took away those people and you had fleshly people in the church and backsliders and gripers, let's see you still come to church after that. Let's see you kick that sin. If everybody starts cussing here, I wonder how many more people will start cussing here. I wonder if there are people here who don't come to church. I wonder how many more of you won't come to church. I wonder if there are some people here who act and dress up and talk like the world and how many of you are going to follow along with that one too? You know what you are? You're a natural person and the Bible says, the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. For there are foolishness unto him because they are spiritually discerned. You know what's sad? Maybe some of you, God forbid that it's not the Holy Spirit convicting you right now, but something natural. Why? Because I delivered it the right way. Did I set the mood right in the preaching? And then, you know, it's so sad that you get under conviction from a preacher who yells because you're so natural in your flesh. You get interested in a teaching or the Word of God or a YouTube video because the title caught to you. You know why? You're natural. You're pleasing your natural parts. You know why? And that's why some of you don't commit as a disciple. Why? It didn't fit your natural preferences. That's why you didn't come to street preaching that day. 
visitation that day. That's why you didn't volunteer that day. That's why you didn't come to church that day. Why? There's something that didn't fit your natural flow, who you are. Well, it's not just me, so I can't uh, help out with cleaning up the toilets. You know, it's not me. Why, why, why? It doesn't go with your natural flow, does it? Who you are. So when are you going to clean the toilet? When everybody starts doing it in the church and then it comes naturally to you? Everyone's doing it, so I should do it too, you know? And then you start cleaning the toilets too because everybody in the church is doing it. You know what's so sad is that you're that weird naked guy who follows Jesus. Why? Because everybody else is going over there. What's going on? I'll go over there too. My third point is the accident of the naked guy. The accident of the naked guy. Notice right here that it says, and there, right, the alienation part followed him, his action, a certain young man. I like how the Holy Spirit's words that. A certain young man. It's like random, like out of nowhere, you know, accidentally, you know, hey, here's some guy, some dude that just came out of nowhere. And they're like, why, why would the Holy Spirit just out of nowhere, just nonchalantly, like so weirdly, just abnormally, just, oh, by the way, there just happened to be a young man by accident that they just bumped into. Why would the Holy Spirit do that? Maybe because we get weird guys like him on the streets who just so happen by accident to come to San Jose Bible, Bible Baptist Church for the past one year, two year, three year, four year, because it just so happened to be. Not because that I made a commitment to follow Jesus. Not by, I made a commitment to, to go to a church that has Bible-believing truth. Not a commitment that, hey, I want to help out the church and please my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to be a blessing and help out the brothers and sisters in Christ. God forbid, that's not... Sadly, that's why you didn't come to church. You just came to church because it just so happened. Just by accident. Why? The previous point, something natural fit your preference. That's what draw you to this church. Let me uh, ask you this question. Maybe you can understand a little more. Maybe this can be more sobering if you think about this, okay? Do you really remember the time that you committed yourself to be a disciple for Jesus. Do you remember when you got victory over against that sin? Amen. When you were like, I'm going to help out Pastor Kim in this church. I'm going to commit myself. Do you really remember that time you did that? Don't just, don't just say, oh, I don't know when, but I know I did. No, no, no. See, you're going by natural. Like because the atmosphere or something drew you and then you just became a part of it. No, there had to be a decision right then and there. Like, God, I commit myself. I'm going to serve you and help out your Bible-believing church. But you never did that, did you? You just went by it because something natural fit with your flow and you just so happened to be the one to smile serving people food in the food lines of San Jose Bible Baptist Church. Is that you? I'll tell you what. I mean, you think I'm being too hard? Think about your salvation. Isn't salvation the most the most important thing ever in your life? Do you remember how you got saved? You don't just get saved by something natural and just happen to do it. No, no, no. You would remember because you made a decision that I don't want to burn in hell. I want to repent. I want to put my faith on what Jesus did and not any good work that I do. Do you really remember that time? Can you tell me the story? Some onliners think that I'm too hard when I ask for their word of testimony, but that word of testimony is so important because it shows that you did make that decision to believe because God don't make you believe. You have to believe. It's your free choice and decision to do that, not just something that God puts in your mind and naturally fits your mood and somehow you just get into it and go with the flow. You're not a robot. You're you, and you're the one that makes the decisions and makes the choices. And then, so did you make that decision? If you don't, rem now, God forbid, there might be some of you like that in this room. 
who might think I was always a Christian, I was always a Baptist, I was always a Baptist. I even thought that the King James Bible, I, I brought my King James Bible. No, 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 no. Do you really remember that time where you made that decision, I'm going to get saved in Jesus Christ? And it was the right gospel too. Not of good works, uh, no false doctrine, but the right gospel that I put my faith on what Jesus did on the cross. And even if I sin and mess up, I know I'm still going to heaven because I put my faith in Jesus Christ. Nothing that I do in my work. If you, if you don't recall that time, and if you can't tell me specifically, you, why not get saved right now? As soon as this preaching is over during altar call, now would be a great time to get saved. Ask one of our people. Trust me. We would be glad. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. It's something to be happy about, excited about, about your salvation. And say, hey, I don't know how to get saved. Will you help me? And the brother and sister will help you. Amen. Ask one of us. Or they'll refer you to a different person. But my main point is not salvation here. I threw that in because just in case somebody's lost. But I brought that point of the salvation testimony because of your discipleship testimony. Do you remember that time you committed to the Lord and said, God, I'm going to, be, I'm going to, I'm going to help out this church, your ministry. I'm going to be a disciple. I'm going to dedicate where nothing bad in my testimony is going to ruin this church. And I'm going to do everything in my power and my action that I'm responsible. I take it seriously. And I'm not going to ignore. I'm not going to forget. I'm not going to neglect. And I'm not going to overlook. But I'm going to take it seriously. Do you remember that time? You know why you have such a hard time Bible reading and prayer? You never committed. Lord, I'm going to read. I'm going to pray. You don't do that. You never committed. You just let it come naturally to you until one sermon hits you hard then, and then it hits you hard naturally and your heart goes through the natural emotions of uh, feeling fear and feeling motivated and you're like, okay, now to read my Bible. Is this too deep or do you understand? Are you that weird naked guy on the street that you just happen to be in church today and serve God and quit... And, you know, do all these things for the Lord just by accident, just randomly. If you can't tell me specifically, if you don't remember that time and place and that testimony of what you committed to the Lord where you made that decision, then I wonder if you just did it by randomly. Just went with the flow, right, naturally. Just so happened to happen. Is that you today? That's why you're struggling so much with the same sins. That's why you're struggling so hard to serve Jesus Christ. Why? You never committed as a disciple and said, I'm your disciple, Jesus. I'm going to carry my cross. I'm going to go through uncomfortable things. Even if my flesh don't like it, you didn't commit to that. My fourth point is the apparel of the naked guy. The apparel of the naked guy. Notice right here when we look at verse uh, 51, the middle at 51, having a linen cloth cast about his naked body. That's his apparel. He only has a thin cloth about him. And you know what's we, uh, what we read from this text is that this certain man, look at that word, okay? Look at the Bible. If, uh, you don't have to believe me. Just look at that book and then believe it. That certain man wore that thin cloth, Right? If he wore that thin cloth, he knew, he knew, and he thought that his apparel was enough. He thought that what I'm wearing is okay. And that, you know, if I follow them, I know what I'm wearing, but I made the conscious decision to still follow anyway. Whoa, good preaching. He thought that the thin cloth was enough. Whoa. You know what's sad with some of you today is that if you are not a committed disciple of Jesus Christ, some of you think that that thin cloth is enough to cover you and to get you to keep following Jesus. Wow, wow. You know what that thin cloth is? Just uh, the people in my church, you know, those brethren. Uh, Brother Randall is always going to encourage me and talk to me. And then uh, Sister Sheila, you know, she'll always be there to comfort me and pray for me. And pastor's over there, as long as he's always there, preaching that King James Bible and preaching hard. I know I'm going to keep following Jesus. Yeah, until Sister Sheila or Brother Randall 
or your pastor, something bad happens and they can't happen to preach and teach that day until there comes a time where they can't follow up with you. You know, you think that thin cloth is enough. It's called this thin cloth, the great Dr. Gene Kim. I, he, oh, he's going to help me so much. This is your thin cloth, and it can't cover your nakedness. If you put Dr. Gene Kim in there, guess what? You're going to fall short of the glory of God real fast. You know what your thin cloth is, some of you, sadly? This preaching. This preaching is that thin cloth that you think that, oh, it'll be enough, and that if I get this every Sunday, I'll be fine. Guess what? My mind... Uh, so I'm still in good health, praise the Lord, but I notice my mind is not as effective when I, in my youth. I can't come up with snappy stuff to keep your attention going. And it'll come to a point where I'm going to talk slow and sound dead as if Brother Sean is reading a missionary letter. And let's see if your heart is stirred with emotion and your attention is on the Word of God and you're going to repent of your sin and get right with God. Let's see if that happens. You know what your problem is? That thin cloth. You know what your thin cloth is? Popcorn preaching, because the brother is preaching. And that's the reason why you're like, I commit myself to help out this church. Why? Because other brothers are doing it. You're looking so much at flesh and not at Jesus Christ. That's so sad. Your thin cloth, look, I'm not underestimating these things the Lord used. These are cloths, and they cover your nakedness, and they help you. But guess what? When you're clothed, when you're building up your clothes at the judgment seat of Christ, it's not just one, one thing and it's a one-shot thing. It's one cloth with another cloth, another cloth, another cloth, and then builds up to your full clothes. Amen. It's not one blowout. If you think one blowout is going to be the thing that would get you going and read your King James Bible and serve God in San Jose Bible Baptist Church, guess what? All it takes is for... Uh, the devil to put hardship in your life and it's a, a long wait till the next blowout. So you need a blowout like every month to keep you going, serving God. That's your problem. You think that thin cloth is enough. Your thin cloth is summer camp. Your thin cloth is blowout. Your thin cloth is uh, Pastor Gene Kim. Your thin cloth is his drawing. Your thin cloth is a building. It's a building. Your thin cloth is my brother and sister in Christ in here. Yeah, wait till you go through an argument with them. We've seen plenty of that in our church. That's your thin cloth, and you won't come to this church anymore. You know why? You're just following the people to San Jose Bible Baptist Church because that thin cloth is enough. Lord, help me today. Help me to preach. I hope you, you're... I hope the Holy Spirit's moving and we're sharing the same spirit here and that there is no tension or division that we're in this together and I hope the Holy Spirit's speaking to your heart because if we're going to get that great blowout and the Holy Spirit moving in, we need to be united as Bible believers in one spirit and not just follow Jesus because I just follow because I committed. Amen. Because it took commitment where we had a successful ones before, didn't we? Not just something natural, everyone's doing it, and not just something random and just happened by accident. I just so happened to do it. I don't know how or why I did it, but I just did it. And the devil's going to get you. My fifth point is the adversity of the naked guy. The adversity of the naked guy. You'll notice that... Adversity hit him at the last part of verse 51, and the young men laid hold on him. Now, think about this. At the beginning of verse 51, he followed them. Why? Because adversity did not hit him. Until adversity hit him with the young men trying to arrest him, that's when he ditched. I'll tell you what, he wouldn't be following Jesus if he saw those young men arresting him at the beginning. Then he wouldn't go, oh, I'll follow Jesus. No, he never even followed to begin with. You know what your problem is? You follow Jesus because there's no adversity. And when adversity hits, then what happens? You skip one church service. Then you skip Sunday and Wednesdays. It always starts out with Wednesday, you know. Something small. 
Starts out with soul winning, you know, soul winning. Let's hit that one, right? Yeah, because it's something so small, soul winning, street preaching, visitation. Pastor will understand, the church will understand. Not a lot of people come over there. So it starts out with that one, and then it's a when, then what happens after that? Then it's the entire Wednesday service. But it's Wednesday, most people come at Sunday. So then, uh, but then what happens is, from when it's Sunday where most of the people come, but then you don't come to Sunday morning service. Why? Most people don't come anyway. It's a preaching. That's the most important part. Because I hear preaching and I get right with God. So that's the most important. So I'll come at that time. And what happens is, see, your problem, your problem is that you're going with the flow with the people in attending these services. But then when adversities hit, whether you're busy, whether you're tired, or whether sad things happen to your family or your household, what happens? Then that's why you deprioritize these things and you start out with Wednesday soul winning to skip, then Wednesday soul winning and Wednesday uh, service, then you skip out a uh, Wednesday soul winning, Wednesday service, and then a Sunday morning service. You're not that big, backslidden. Sunday morning service. And then what happens after that? You skip Wednesday and Sundays because the church understands and I'm struggling with something. And then you skip all those services for weeks now and then months now. And when's the last time we saw you? And then the next time you come, we're so happy to see you because we haven't seen you for a long time. But during that long time, do you think that the devil already ruined your walk so much to a point that you're starting all over from scratch again? You know why? why? Why couldn't you attend all those services, you know? Shouldn't it be easy? No, it's not easy. Do we get hard on you and judge you for skipping those services? Not really. Why? You went through an adversity. That's why I know you skipped out. There was something adverse in your life that happened to you. The devil just so happened to attack it. It happened through your mom or through your dad or through your wife or through your husband. Some silly little fight going on in the home or some silly little fight with some brother and sister in the church or in the workplace something bad happened and it just so happened, just came at a bad time and a bad moment. That's what it takes for you to bail out and not follow Jesus Christ is because of adversity. That's it. Simple. That's there's something that made your flesh uncomfortable, something that stressed you out, something you weren't ready for, and that's your problem. Why weren't you ready? You, you'll come to church, what, when it, things flow with your schedule? See, you're going with the flow again, natural. You're going by your preferences again. You're just going by accident, random chance again. When things just happen to go well coincidentally and fit everything in the right moment, then I can come to summer camp. I, I, now I have a question for you. This might be eye-opening. Tell me what are your terms and conditions on what will make you attend every service and volunteer for everything in the church? Give me that list. Did you even make your list? No, you didn't, didn't you? You know why? You just, well, when I do, then I do serve God. When I help out, I'll help out. See? Going by natural, random things to build it up for you. My sixth point. The abandonment of the naked guy. The abandonment of the naked guy. Uh, small confession is uh, the devil attacked uh, me and my family pretty hard, so... Uh, I, th I think maybe that's the reason why uh, that uh, this sermon, maybe he didn't want this preached. On, maybe, you might, uh, maybe some of you might commit today. I wasn't going to preach this, you know that? I wasn't going to preach this today. So I might uh, be very tired because I didn't get much sleep and then I went through some attacks, but, you know, I think maybe the Lord set up something. I hope that we're in the same spirit here together. And that we don't let the devil hinder this and ruin your commitment to God. Amen. My sixth point, the abandonment of the naked guy. The abandonment of the naked guy. Notice right here that the naked guy, uh, verse 52, and he left the linen cloth. Now, isn't that wording interesting he didn't the bible didn't say and he left 
You know what the Bible says? And he left the what? Linen cloth. That was the cloth you thought was enough for you, wasn't it? What happened? You abandoned it now. Yeah, yeah, uh, I'll serve God. and I follow Jesus. Why? Because of summer camp. Because of a blowout. That was your thin cloth. But guess what? You keep relying on that thin cloth. What happens? Trust me, you will abandon summer camp one day. You will abandon the blowout one day. I promise you that much. If your faith is on that thin cloth, guess what? You will abandon it. You might say, why? Why is that? Because you never really cared about it. Oh, I care about this church. I care about you, pastor. You might say that now, but guess what? When adversity hits, adversity will show the fleshly weakness of yourself you never saw before, and then you're going to realize that through this fleshly weakness, oh, I can't serve God anymore. I, I can't be with Pastor Kim or help out those people in the church anymore. I can't forgive brother and sister so-and-so in that church and pastor, you know, where he was imperfect right here. I cannot overlook those things. That's what's going to happen one day. Why? Well, it takes adversity. It takes adversity. You, because that was your thin cloth. You put all your faith not on Jesus Christ, but on this church and on Pastor Kim and upon people. Why wasn't it never God to begin with? Why wasn't it just Jesus and me? Lord, I commit myself to you. Isn't that simple? Isn't it simple? God made it simple. It's not complex. How do you serve God? It's just a commitment where, Lord, whatever it takes, I will serve you. I don't profess to be strong and I know I'm going to fall and there's fears that I have so I can't really commit 100% to you but I'm willing to, Lord, and would you help me? It just takes something simple like that. Amen. Why don't you do that? No, you don't, do you? You just hear the sermon. You just nod your head and you just go amen. You let things come naturally to you and then let random chances finally get you to church one day. And you'll be like one of those church members one day that if you bring 10 people to church, you'll get a flat screen TV. It's going to take some motivating factor for you to get to church one day now. And that's going to be your thin cloth, TV. It doesn't have to be spiritual. Now it will become fleshly one day. If you keep putting thin cloth on the things of this world rather than on Jesus Christ, that thin cloth, which was a spiritual thing, is soon going to be a fleshly thing. And that fleshly thing will be your motivating factor to keep coming to church and keep following Jesus. You will abandon. You know, you might, you might be the one... Uh, setting up food in the kitchen. You might be the one coming to church and preaching your heart out on the streets when we're soul winning. You might be the one that would uh, help out and preach on this pulpit and teach a good message. You might be that one one day, but then guess what? You didn't really care about these things after all, and you'll be the guy who preached, who, who said, I quit preaching. Whoa. You'll be the guy who helped out the kitchen and just so happened to get discouraged and not sign your name on the volunteer sheet anymore. You'll soon be the person that was once yelling out on the streets on top of his lungs for Jesus Christ, and then you're even afraid to hold a sign or a bumper sticker or even give it out a track to somebody. You'll be that guy one day. You'll be the guy who'll abandon Jesus. Why? It takes adversity. You didn't, you, look, we, we say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Pastor Kim. I love San Jose Bible Baptist Church. I love all of you. Yeah, no, nah, no. You didn't really care after all, did you? You left your thin cloth behind and you abandoned ship. The guy who treasured the songbook will one day throw it, not this way, but throw it down like this and say, I'm not going to sing anymore. One day you'll be that person. Oh, I see you guys, heart, mind, soul into it, but I wonder if you're just following rather than committing that I, I want to glorify Jesus Christ. I made a commitment. My last point is the avoidance of the naked guy, the avoidance of the naked guy. You know what the sad thing is in verse 52, it says, and fled from them naked. So you know what happened to him? Now he's naked. He lost his thin 
covering and protection and everything. And now he's hurt, ruined, running away. He lost his thin cloth, and he avoided the crowd this time. He's, he avoided Jesus Christ. I'm not going anywhere near that. And you know what's sad with some of you? Some of you have some already made, had some traumatic things or fearful experiences that you already made. You already said that I'm going to avoid coming to Sunday services. I'm going to avoid preaching on the streets with the brothers. I'm going to avoid uh, Pastor Kim in general and the church in general. I want to start off my own life and do something else. Yeah, but when you flee, you're going to flee naked. You're going to flee naked where you're ruined, hurt, battered by the consequences of your sin. Because sin is never fair to you. You think Satan's going to let you go unscathed? You're going to abandon. And guess what? No matter how much the preacher preaches his heart out, I can preach sermons like this every day. And you, guess what? You're going to avoid it. Your conscience is going to be seared. You're going to go, oh, I know what he's going to say next. I know the verse he's going to use. Oh, no matter what convicting thing is, you know, I've been through that. Pa Pastor, I know you're trying to help me. I can see your heart. I can see you're trying, but, you know, I, I already know all that. I've been through it. I've thought about it for a long time, and I already made my choice and decision. And you already made the choice and decision. You're going to avoid getting right with God. You're going to avoid anything that has to do with following Jesus. You're the guy that followed us online, didn't you? Because you didn't make a commitment to Bible-believing truth or, you know, no matter what, Pastor Kim, you know, says something that offends me, I'm going to commit and watch and be a Bible-believing disciple of Jesus Christ. No, you never did that. You just uh, went with the flow. It was a catchy title or a picture. And you're following. But guess what? A lot of you avoid it now because you just did that. You just followed because it was a title, a drawing. And then guess what happened? Because you just went without committing to Jesus. Now a lot of you avoided me now. Because there was something I said that offended you. There was something that I taught from the Word of God that you said, no, that's just wrong, that's just weird, that's just heresy. And now you avoid me in general and you unsubscribe. And anytime you see my name that pops out in a search engine, even if something natural comes in or by accident, my name comes out where I can try to get you to follow Jesus, you're going to avoid that in general and say, oh, I already know, ignore. I'm not just hitting on onliners. A lot of you know what I mean now. It's applying to you too. You're just following because there's something that attracted you in this church. And it's not a commitment to Jesus. It's just something natural or it just happened by accident. And then guess what? What's going to happen one day? One day you're going to abandon. And you're going to, and you're going to avoid. It's not just abandon. You're going to avoid. You're going to avoid now. Anytime, if it was shouting that got you to shout and sing for the Lord, what's going to happen if you do if you just follow because of shouts and not because of a commitment to Jesus. What's going to happen is adversity is going to hit, make you bitter and upset. And then when you get so bitter and upset or hurt by something in the church, the next time you sing and you hear shout, you're going to go, you're not going to let that naturally hit you or just randomly hit you and get you to automatically shout. No, your mind's going to automatically switch the avoidance button and you're going to go, no, I know what this is. And I ain't going to shout. Because I'm not just going to shout because people shout. No, uh, I've already seen the hurt in this church and I ain't shouting. Is this too deep or you're understanding something here? You know what's so dangerous about this step? What's so dangerous about this step is that because you relied on this kind of preaching, so to speak, to get to you, one day, no matter what kind of, no matter what tricks that I used in this preaching to get to you, it's not going to work anymore one day. Because you already know it, and you went through adversity and hurt, and you're going to go, I already know all that, and that don't work on me anymore, Pastor. And you're going to avoid it. See, you're going to keep avoiding. So every time God naturally, even if God naturally reaches out to you, we naturally reach out to you to get you to motivated to serve God, that ain't going to work anymore. Because you already know all of that. You've been through the road, the system, you know, and you're like, I already know all that. Don't work anymore. Click off. Avoid it. Avoid it. Avoid, avoid, avoid. What can I do then, Pastor? You never searched 
for the areas you never committed to Jesus. You need to start searching for that now. You need to start finding why you skipped out in street preaching, in uh, discipleship, or fellowship, or one by one, or helping out the church or something. You got to search what you didn't commit. You never did that, did you? You know why? You just went by the flow. You didn't commit. You need to search what you didn't commit. And with those areas, I'm not telling you to foolishly say, I commit and I'm not going to mess up. No, if you feel like, oh, this is so hard and I don't know if I can do that, then did you ever pray to the Lord? Lord, this is what, this is, I cannot commit to you. It's so hard for me. Will you help me to do it? Because I can't do it. I'm so weak and I'm pathetic. I'm willing to commit to you, but I'll be honest, my flesh won't commit, but I'm willing to, will you help me? And you think that God is not going to answer that prayer. Do you honestly believe God's going to say, no, I'm not going to help you? He'll help you. Amen. He will. If you make that commitment, then what you need to, you have to also keep in mind the same time when you're committing to something you have to think about those uncomfortable things that's preventing you to commit. You have to think about those uncomfortable things on what makes you not follow Jesus anymore. You never committed to those things, did you? You never committed, Lord, when this happens in the church, I commit to serve you still. Lord, when this temptation and sins happen, I commit to avoid that temptation and sin. You never made that commitment, did you? you got to think about those uncomfortable things, those adversities, and you need to surrender them to the Lord and say, God, I don't yield to adversity. I yield to you. I surrender to you. You have to think about that. Why? Why should I think about that? Because Christian life is full of things that you will be uncomfortable with. Why did you come to our church, serve God, and help us out? Because it fits your comfort zone, your comfort level. See, natural again. Has to, things have to come naturally for you to serve God. You have to say, Look, this ba these bad things can happen anyway. We might get a bad day at church. We might, uh, in my duty that I'm serving the Lord, bad things might happen. I commit. I'm going to do it anyway. Yes, regardless. If you say, well, I don't think I can do a perfect job, that's fine. I don't think I can do a perfect job either. either. If I thought that way, then uh, I would be so scared and I wouldn't preach on this pulpit anymore if I had to do a perfect job. Right, I had to think, Lord, I'm flesh and I'm weak and I'm stupid and sinful. Yes. And I'm going to mess up in preaching, but I commit to you. Will you help me? Yes. And I made tons of mistakes on this pulpit, but I think God's helping me so far. Amen. I think I still got a message where people get right with God. I think I still got a sermon where people thank me for preaching. When it's not of me, it's all from Jesus. I think so. I think God can do a good job. Yeah. And what you need to do after that is you need to put not just one thin cloth. You need to put this thin cloth, this thin cloth, this cloth, this cloth, this cloth, this cloth, this cloth, this cloth, and cover yourself. You need to say, blow out, street preaching, one by one, monthly fellowship, even coming here early or just reading my Bible first thing and pray first thing. You know, uh, when that sin and that sign of temptation happens, avoid that, avoid that, avoid that, and then just start out with committing. Commit and Lord, help me out here. And then soul winning and then track pass out. And yeah, that bulletin, I'm going to memorize those verses and then those tracks and then you're fully clothed. And then when one, one clock tears away and it's gone, let's say it's brethren in the church, but then brethren let you down, guess what? You already have this whole patch where I read the Bible too many times and uh, I prayed so much already and I've done soul winning a lot. And those things will cover your back. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. You know what else is encouraging? Sometimes what's even encouraging, sometimes what's even encouraging is that even if all these clothes doesn't really help you out, that one thin cloth, will keep you going because at least you're still following Jesus. And yeah, sometimes it does take one blowout yeah. to keep you following Jesus. So can't you be encouraged with that and just put on more cloths? More the better because when a couple of them don't work anymore, the other one's going to cover my back. Hey, 
But you might say that, uh, uh, Pastor, I think the things that I do for the Lord is already enough. I, I'm all right. I don't need to make changes on the altar. You know what's sad? You are Revelation 3.17. You are that weird, naked guy on the street who don't even know it. The Bible says, because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. No, I know all of that, preacher. I've heard that preaching thousands of times. I already know what to do to get right with God. And yeah, that don't really apply to me. That don't really hit me. And yeah, I'm okay. I'm all right. And, and the Bible says right here, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Is that you today? Then guess what? You're weirder. You're we more weird than that weird guy on the streets. Because the weird guy on the street at least know that he has a thin cloth and it's not enough. But he just went out anyway, right? You're the guy that don't even know you only have that thin cloth. You think you got enough. Wow. Good preaching. Why not cover yourself? Cover yourself. Cover your nakedness today. Every head bow and every eye shut. Cover your nakedness today. Father, I pray that today's preaching has, has convicted these people. It was a hard sermon, Lord, but I know it was very important because that's why people, they're not, that's why they haven't done well in church or their spiritual walk. They didn't commit. Lord, will you help us? Some of these people, I'll speak for them, Lord. Some of them, they can't, it's so hard for them. Can you understand their situation and their weakness? And help them, please. With every head bowed and every eye shut, I hope that you would take time to commit to the Lord today. Did you commit? There's something you didn't commit. That's why you're still messing up. That's why there's still fights going on in church, fights going on in your relationship, fights going on in your home. That's the reason why you keep messing up with the same sin problem that you've always fell into over and over again. And that's the reason why you keep forgetting, you keep ignoring, you keep neglecting things that you could do to help out the brethren, and in the end, you burden them instead. That's why your Bible reading, your prayer life, your memory verse, and everything is poor because you didn't commit well, it's so hard to commit, then tell him that and ask him to help you. Isn't that so simple and easy? There's no magic wand or something complicated. We don't need CBT treatment or something to get you to serve God. It's commitment and it's God helping you if you would only ask him. It's that adversity you surrender, you commit to him. That adversity, what is your fear? What is your adversity? Do you dare bring that before the Lord or will you pretend to ignore and pretend it doesn't exist? And you're that same person who's rich, clothed, and you don't realize you're naked. I want to make sure every soul is saved here. I don't want you to die and burn in hell forever. If you're not 100% sure that you will go to heaven after you die, we offer you now this chance to get saved. You might say, how do I get saved? It's so easy. Sin puts you to hell. You burn in hell forever because of your sin. Do you realize that? You say, okay, yeah, yeah, I sin, pastor. I know I'm going to hell because of my sin. What do I do? Good. The only thing that can wash away every sin you've done is the blood of Jesus. That's why Jesus died, buried, resurrected. Because it's only that way he did to clear up every wrongdoing you've done. When Jesus washes away every sin, then you have zero sin, and thus you can go to heaven. Isn't that easy? You might say, well, then how do I get that blood? You believe in it. It's that simple. You believe, and you tell him that. You tell him, God, I believe. Only what you did on Calvary will get me to heaven. It's not by going to church. It's not by quitting all your sins. It's not by living a good life. If you're trusting in those things, rather than what Jesus did on the cross, you're going to still go to hell. You need to trust only, only what Jesus did on the cross. If you're willing to say that to the Lord, I can help you say that right now. 
I'll give you the words you can repeat after me and you don't even have to say it out loud, okay? Don't, you don't have to say it out loud, just say it to yourself. Mean it. Repeat after me, dear God. I repent as a sinner. I believe Jesus is God who died, buried, and resurrected so his blood can wash away my sin. I only trust in that to save me, not my good works. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. If you can keep your heads bowed and eyes shut, heads bowed and eyes shut. No one is looking around. No one is going to point out who you are. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to point you out. All I'm asking is, if this is your uh, first time doing it with me, Lord, uh, Pastor, I repeated those words after you, and I believe what Jesus did on the cross to save me. Could you slip up your hand real briefly, real quick, just a little, little bit height. That's all enough. Thank you for your honesty. I appreciate your honesty. No shame. No shame in getting saved. All right? All right, you can put your hands down. Thank you. Father God, I pray that today was the day of their salvation and that uh, now that they remember how they got saved, only by faith in what you did on Calvary. Now, I also pray for those who are already saved, who want to commit to be your disciple. I pray they will remember this day as well when they committed and surrendered all to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.